So welcome to the start of the next video. First job in today is stripping this um, hot rod engine. This is coming in just to be topped and tailed. It's, uh, it's the spare engine for the one that was dynoed a couple of videos back. So first port of call, what we've already done is measure the cam timing, just so we know what it was set to before it was stripped. Now we're taking the cams out first so I can measure them to see what cams are in it because there's no markings on them. And then strip the engine, get it through the cleaner, new rings, bearings and any other bits it needs and then back together. The spare hot rod engine is completely stripped down now, ready to go into the acid bath. The oil is in bad condition, um, but the engine's actually in quite good condition. I haven't as yet measured the bore and the piston clearance but it's all for saying it's quite an old race engine it's not actually so bad so new set of um, rings new set of ARP bolts new set of bearings get the strip the oil pump have a look at that polish the crank check the balance and uh, put it back together. The crank has been ground before to 0.25. So uh, we noticed a water leak from the core plug here. But yeah, it's quite an old engine, so not a bad wear. The, the other thing that I did was check the uh, camshaft on the cam doctor. So I'll show you that because we don't think the cams are a lot of good. So there's the cam data in a graph form. So <clears throat> the blue one is the exhaust cam and the dark blue one is the inlet cam. And then what we could do is change this and view it as all different style of data and work out exactly what we've got. So I'm gonna to speak to Andy at Kent Cams about a new set of cams for it to uh, put a bit of lift into it and change the opening and closing. Um, figures to to give him some more acceleration and some more top end top end won't be a problem with this because the exhaust cam that's in it is uh, actually quite a mild cam it's not really a hot rod spec cam so we can we can actually improve on this I've had a customer turn up that's had valve guides fitted to these pair of standard Rover V8 cylinder heads but he wants to fit a new style stem seal on it. So the valve guide that should have gone in it, really, uh, it looks like this. It has a boss on the top for the stem seal to sit on, where they fitted the old standard style ones. So instead of pressing them out and pressing new guides in, I'm going to set that up on the machine and then try and put that register onto the top of the, the guides that are in there. So our video doing that hopefully will be successful with that. And the other job that's coming... Oh, no, actually... Um, Jamie that I'm doing the, the block for he sent me two sets of side valve, side feed injectors to recondition so these ones are out of a VW and these ones up here are out of the players Toyota Corolla A86 that Jamie's building at the moment so I'll video these being done because uh, I haven't done a set of side feeds for a long time I've had to buy this um injector block from as new um but tony there sorted me out with that so they're a good bunch of guys up there especially tony i, I deal with tony a lot and uh, so he sent me that down so i can crack on with that and then another job that's come to an end is the focus rs so this is got it's steel rods forged pistons custom age big end bolts uh, ARP main stud kit, uh, knife edged crankshaft, it's all built now, it's all torqued up, I've got to put the oil pump on, the rear oil seal, uh, the customer's got the sump and then I've just got to go through some bits on the cylinder head for him, um, but that'll probably be the later part of the week, uh, and that's it, that is it. The head that I've just showed you is one of a pair of Rover V8 cylinder heads. And what I've got to do to these, I'll show you on the machine, is 
my customer has already had a set of valve guides installed to the Rover V8 and these are just basic early type valve guides nothing wrong with them they're fine but they they use an old tile umbrella style valve stem oil seal uh, my customer doesn't want to run that so what you can get is a later style valve guide which uses a conventional style oil seal so because it's just had these fitted and the seats have been cut and everything's been done to them we're going to try and replicate that step onto the top of this valve guide and, it, and, it, oops, and it's basically to accept that style valve stem oil seal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my valve seat cutter but instead of using this part of the valve seat cutter to either cut the seat or bore it out to put a lead free seat on it I'm going to use the inside of the cutter to bore down to put a step on so I've already preset this I've done so by using a valve guide and getting it where it just about cuts and then I'm going to just very carefully start to put the step onto one valve guide and then try one of the valve stem oil seals on top of it to see if it fits snug um, I'm going to measure this distance here and then as soon as it starts to um, cut on the top of the guide I'll reset the machine up here which I'll show in a minute so I know that I'm coming down to the same depth but I'll start to set it up and then I'll record doing the job so that's the cutter all set up so what I'm going to do now is start the spindle I'm going to measure the depth on the test guide and then I can reset the ruler here and know that I'm going to cut in at the same amount. I've got to put a chamfer on the top of it, but I'm going to just pull it back first and make sure that the stem, valve stem oil seal fits on it okay. Second one of the Rover V8 cylinder heads in, come for the um, stem seal conversion. So I've done three of the guides already. This is the fourth one, so I'm just gonna show how I do it again. So first of all, lock the machine, then centralize it in the guide on the computer up here. And then, as it starts to cut the top of the guide, reset my counter. And then what I'm looking for is I'm coming down onto the guide until that gauge there reads six mil. So I've got four more to do, but what I'll quickly do is show you the cylinder head that's been through the wash. So that's all of the guides now with the chamfer on. So the last thing I've got to do to that is put a stem seal on it. So for that, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the top of the guide, just so it doesn't pull on the rubber. And then find the right size pilot, which is, Right, next look from that which is that one and then the installer as well which is here so screw that onto there so fit the stem seal onto the installer so it's nice and snug and that's it just push it so it's all the way down like that that's the job done 
So I can ring my customer now, tell him that it's all sorted. I'll fit all the stem seals on both cylinder heads for him, but first of all, I've got to go and finish the second cylinder head on the, on the seat cutter. A good tight fit, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Second head done, I just need to put it through the wash and moving on to the next job. It's been a little while since we've got a video out, so I must apologise for that. Uh, there's been so much going on with the unit and work and uh, one of the lads that works for me on my snap-on van and it is noticing which has uh, sent my brain into orbit a little bit. I'd like to wish my mum a happy birthday as well. Don't know if she watches the the videos. I mean I've already spoke to her, she lives in Spain so if you are watching mum, happy birthday and I'll be over to see you soon. I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown of what's going on in here at the minute. I've got the boring bar going down a VW engine for um, my, mate's, my mate's dad actually, it's uh, it's his car, uh, Jamie at JTEC Automotive, it's his dad's car what Jamie's building the engine for, so I'm going to do the machining on that for him. So the bore is going down it at the moment, and then I'm going to skim the block wash it and make it look nice, ready for Jamie to build it, hone it. Uh, I've got a cross flow, I've got a cross flow um, engine in the wash which is getting ready to, to build this week also. Let me just clip this into the stand. Um, <clears throat> I'm stripping the VVC cylinder head for the um, Rover K or MG K series engine. So this is um, my old race head. I don't know if you remember if I spoke about it in a previous video. I'm sure I did, but they was trying to find some more power with different cylinder heads and everything, but they've not been successful in that. So I'm um, I'm going through my cylinder head again now uh, just to make sure that it's all good, ready for. Um, putting that back on so there's a bit of reconditioning to do it had an issue with the spark plug at some stage so I've got to um, clean the cylinder head up in places I've also got a Nissan SR20 DET cylinder head coming in this week uh, sorry engine coming in this week which we built it for the customer and he uh, accidentally got two oil pipes back to front on it and uh, and uh, it's rattled the crankshaft so um, we stick by our work even though you know the customer's been really good and just said look I, I made a bit of a boo-boo I've got these oil pipes the wrong way around but I'll help him out with that as best as I can so the K-series engines there that's all going back together as well so this is the kind of job that I don't like doing this engine left me <coughs> a few months ago it's an SR20 DET engine that I've done a stroker conversion on gas flowed big valve it's all signal dancing this engine um customer got in touch with me and uh um well basically the the car was originally blown up and uh we've done the engine for him the car is a no expense spared rebuild it's stunning uh but one thing that we think that he did was fit the um the old oil cooler which which was filled with um engine swarf and it's caused some engine damage. Also, he got one of the remote oil pipes fitted back to front, uh, noticed it, put it the right way, but by that time we think the damage is done. So he's brought it back today. We're gonna to quickly open it up and see see what we need to get ordered to, to fix it for him. So I've got the sump off the SR20 DET. Uh, I've taken the, the main girdle carrier off and I've taken the main caps off and as you can see there is serious uh, main bearing wear from um, from debris getting into the engine. There's some slight scoring on the crank but I think that'll polish out. It looks like it's sat on top but we'll have to have a measure up. And um, yeah, I mean unfortunately 
this engine I'm going to tear it down to nothing because um, I want to get all the oil gallery bungs out of it. I want to get into every oil hole, I want to strip the oil pump. If it's done that to the bearings on whatever running Alan, uh, my customer, said it had done, which wasn't a lot, then it's, on, it's in the engine everywhere. The head's going to have to be completely stripped down and, and everything else. So um, it's a bit of a sad day, really. I don't like to see my engines fail. Um, look, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this engine, to be fair. It's the fact that it had dirt in the oil cooler from before. But um, I like to sort of do them and then see them back every year two years for topping and tailing where where this has done nothing really it's ran for no no real mileage at all i think he said nine mile on the dyno or something like that so uh plus a bit of running in his workshop but this just goes to show that if you've got a race car and it's had a blow up don't risk oil coolers oil lines it's a very very expensive mistake to make Get the stuff out, get it in the bin, and start again. Um, with an expensive oil cooler system, we can offer a service where we can send the oil coolers off to uh, to a company to be uh, properly cleaned, uh, which is a guaranteed cleaning procedure as well. But if it's a couple of hundred quid oil cooler, bin it. Bin it and start again because, well, this is going to cost this guy quite a lot of money really and I'm going to do my bit cheap because I want to stand by my engine I want to see my customer happy but still I can't do it for nothing and it needs expensive gaskets expensive bearings everything else to go with it so yeah I'll carry on stripping it and I'll show I'll show it completely in bits as well the SR20 DET engine is now completely stripped most of it's been through the cleaner um, I've taken out the oil gallery bung so I can get down there to try and get any swarf out of the block I'm gonna to have to quickly get rid of the sealer because this engine uh, there they use sealer to glue them together they've got no gaskets in them so I'm gonna um, just quickly get that off before I put that in the cleaner the crank's got some marks on it so what I'm gonna do I've put that through the cleaner once I'm gonna polish it to see if these bits polish up hopefully they do if not then it needs a crank grind uh, one of the problems it's got, there's a, some wear on this exhaust cam, on the lobe there, and also on the finger that sits underneath this, and also on the front there, there's a bit of wear. Um, there's a little bit of wear in the cylinder head. Um, all the bearings are destroyed, which we knew about that anyway. But they're all there. So like I said earlier, um, always make sure the plumbing is the right way around on oil coolers and bits and bobs like that on dry sump systems. And if you're running an oil cooler, don't run an old oil cooler. Um, this is now probably in the last two years from people plumbing dry sump systems up wrong or oil coolers wrong. This is probably the fourth or fifth engine that I've had to redo. Um, so it's a bit frustrating for me because that was a really nice engine and and I've you know a lot of it I've got to redo again now but um, I'll call my customer up in a little while have a chat with him and work out exactly what he wants to do and how he wants to do it uh, and then we'll start piecing it back together so doing the first set of the side valve injectors these are the Toyota ones um, process is exactly the same as doing top feed the only difference is instead of the fuel pipe and the adapter block feeding the injector from the top like this injector here they feed from the side so we have to make well we have to buy in these special blocks from Asnu to to enable that because it has to have the um, o-ring at the bottom and o-ring at the top to stop it leaking but the actual procedure of testing is exactly the same so this is the Toyota ones as I just said so the first thing I'm going to do is prime the injector to get any air out of the system then I'm going to do a leak test on the injector so that's running the the fuel pressure through the injector but not firing the injector so it, it tests the the needle and seat in the injector so that's all fine 
I have noticed though that the test block that I've bought has got a slight fuel fuel leak in it. I'll have to look at that later. Next test is a impedance test. These are high impedance injectors. This fuel droplets here is coming because the test block's leaking on the end, so I'll sort that in a moment. And then the next thing is a flow test. So I'll prime it to set my fuel pressure where I want it to. So that's it. Three bar, I'm just going to back that down to, well just over three bar, I'm going to back that down to three bar. So I'm going to make sure that the, um, the, the test tubes are empty, there's no fuel build up in them, or test fluid build up in them. And then I'm going to lift the test block down, and then run a test. Sure, all the wires are connected. Oh, so that won't be a great test. So this test runs for 30 seconds. And then as you can see it, the, the injectors need a little bit of love. The lowest one is flowing 73 and the highest is 80. So hopefully by the time I've put them through the cleaner a few times, we'll get that spray pattern bang on. So I'll record the data in the test sheet and then I'll take these injectors off and start to run them through the ultrasonic. So that's the bodies of the injectors all been ultrasonic. So they've cleaned up really nice. The ultrasonic fluid's pretty dirty now, so I'm going to use the um, drinks bottle to empty the ultrasonic fluid and put new in it. Keep it nice and clean. So the Toyota side feed injectors are all reconditioned now. They're all they're all good. They're, uh, the spray pattern's a lot cleaner. Uh, they're flowing a little bit more, they're flowing more evenly. Um, I've put new O-rings on it, I've cleaned out the filters, so I'm just going to bag these up in a second. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be running the same customer's VW side feed injectors. I've already got a test block for this, so I, don't, I didn't need to order one of them, but what I didn't have, which is a bit of a nightmare, is the wiring harness for it. To speed things up and to save me having to order one from Asnu, I've just quickly made a basic harness up so I could test the injectors one by one. I'm going to put both injectors on the same test sheet because the spacing's for eight injectors. But we can see at the minute the Toyota injectors are on the test sheet, the spray pattern's improved, and the second chart down shows the actual flow rate compared to the top setting, uh, which is here so before they was flowing 73 80 75 and 77 now they're doing 79 79 77 and 79 so they're a lot they're a lot more even now um, so I'm going to crack on with the VW injectors and we'll see what they're like so the first problem that I've got with these VW injectors is none of them are firing so it's a bit of a bit of a nightmare really but I've managed to get um, three of them working so far I think where they've probably not been used for a while they've all got a bit gummed up inside so what I do to get these working is I connect the electrics to the top of them and then just give the bodies a tap and then if it is a stuck injector they normally fire back into life so I'm gonna just uh, tackle them now and that's it with the aid of some ultrasonic firing through it that's that injector now firing, so I can go ahead and carry on the testing. 
Uh, so that's the VW injectors all done now. Um, they was all jammed, but with a little tap they got going again and the ultrasonic through them. And the good news is with a clean up, they're all flowing exactly the same. So that's another set done. I'll bag them side feeds up and um, convert this machine back over to top feeds and carry on with the, the Jaguar injectors. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry there's been a gap again, but at the moment I've got so much going on I'm finding it a little bit hard to um, get all these videos done and my wife's flat out as well so um, yeah it's all it's all a bit it's all a bit much at the moment but it's uh, it's five to nine so I'm gonna go home we're gonna get this video up tonight um, the next video is gonna have uh, a workshop update in it uh, we've fixed a uh, Vauxhall XE cylinder head which is quite a nice repair so I've videoed that already we're gonna add that to it um, there's the walk round the cross flow race engine I think on the next video and also the K series race engine that'll be done as well so uh, thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already hit the like button hit the alert bell and leave the word pick up in the comment section if you could that'd be great and i'll see you on the next video cheers bye